Next up, we have layer 3, and that is the networking layer. Here, we go beyond our local network. We go on to the internet. And layer 3 uses IP addresses. The internet is IP based. And on layer 3, we isolate our traffic into broadcast domains. We will cover that later. I don't think you need to know all the protocols on layer 3, but maybe IP, IPsec, ICMP, and that's probably it. But as a good reminder, most of the protocols on layer 3 start with an I. The only one that starts with an I that is not layer 3 is IMAP, that's layer 7. So even if you can't remember if a protocol is layer 3, as long as you know everything that starts with I except IMAP is layer 3. And with layer 3, since we're moving beyond a local network, we go on to the internet, we also start seeing many more different types of attacks, which we will cover later, but that can be ping of death or ping floods or smurf attacks, spoof source addresses, direct broadcasts, DHCP attacks, and so on. And we are going to cover all of those a little bit later. Then we move to layer 4, that is the transport layer. And on layer 4, we have some of the components we talked about earlier, UDP and TCP. UDP was the connectionless traffic, that was what we used for anything that needed to be real-time or near real-time. Whereas TCP was what we used for anything where integrity was most important, and it taking that quarter of a second longer to load was not critical. That's all our websites, that's the payment information. Anything that's not going to be adversely affected by whatever we're doing, taking a quarter of a second longer. UDP is connectionless, it just sends the traffic, and it doesn't really care if it gets there. TCP is connection-oriented, and the data is reassembled at the destination. And here again, it's pretty common to use a hybrid model. Some things can be sent in TCP, and others in UDP. One of the attack vectors that attackers can use against UDP traffic can be fraggle attacks. They work similar to what Smurf attacks does, but they can be more successful since it uses UDP and not ICMP. And the reason it's more successful is many places block ICMP, but they don't block UDP. And what it really is, is just a DDoS attack, distributed denial of service, where the attacker sends a large amount of spoofed UDP traffic to a router's broadcast address, basically overloading the router and sometimes causing it to crash or go into an error state. Smurf attacks does the same, but again, it uses ICMP instead of UDP, and since many places block ICMP, it can be less effective. And then with TCP, it really is everything that UDP is not. It is reliable, it's connection-oriented, it guarantees delivery, and it uses a three-way handshake. You can see it over here on the right. So the client sends a SYN, the server sends a SYNAC, and then the client sends an ACK. Synchronize, synchronize, acknowledge, acknowledge. The TCP protocol, of course, is a lot slower, but here the purpose isn't speed, it's reliability and integrity. And since we want that reliability, we want to confirm that everything we sent was received, it's going to be slower and it's going to have a lot more overhead. Now, if I go to my own website, thorteaches.com, I go and I ask the server to send me the website information. The server sends it, but it also sequences all the packages. On my system, I might receive packet 1, 2, 3, 4, but 5 is missing. I will then ask, hey, can you resend packets number 5? By the time I do that, I probably have received 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Once I get packet 5, it will be added between 4 and 6. Eventually, I will have received all the packages and I can see the full website. The most common attack against TCP are SYN floods. And that was the three-way handshake we just talked about. The client sends a SYN. The server replies with SYNAC, and then the server just sits there and waits on the final act for the client. But during an attack, the client never sends it. And it's not just one client, right? That will do nothing. But it is thousands or hundreds of thousands of clients all sending those connection requests. And the server just sits there waiting for the final act from those hundreds of thousands of connections, each of them taking a little bit more of resources, and at some point that can cause the server to crash. For each of the layers in the OSI model, a little more information is added or subtracted depending on which way we go. Layer 1 is by far the fastest and dumbest layer, Layer 7 is the slowest and most intelligent. On Layer 1, it's just data, ones and zeros. And the higher up we go in the OSI stack, the more information is added onto the data, which then of course creates more overhead. When we send our data as TCP to make sure that we get it as fast as possible while still having reliable delivery, the connection between the two endpoints is going to try to speed up as much as possible while still not losing too much data. 
You can think of this like two people talking. And one person just keeps talking faster and faster and you can't really find out what they're saying. And then the other person say, hey, slow down. I can't understand what you're saying. You're talking too fast. That is what the TCP protocol does. If we start losing too many packages, the sender gets told, hey, slow down. I'm missing too much information. And then at some point, it will level out where it's optimal for how fast it can send while still not losing too much data. Next up, we have layer 5, 6, and 7. And the reason why we cover those together is because they're a lot more integrated than the other layers. Remember, the PDUs for layer 5, 6, and 7 are all data. On top of that, there's not really a lot happening on those layers. So layer 5 is the session layer. The session layer establishes the connections between the two layers. It maintains the connection and it stops the connection when we're done. Layer 6 is the presentation layer. It does the formatting, the compression, the encryption on a file level for the data that we send. And layer 6 is also really the only layer that has no protocols. Which then brings us to layer 7, the application layer. And while this is not the actual applications, this is where the data is presented to the user using their applications. That could be your website or whatever application that you're using. On top of the interface to all the applications, it's also where we have all the user protocols. This is where we have HTTP or HTTPS because websites are presented here. It's also FTP, SNMP, IMAP, and POP. The last three are what we use for our emails. All of this happens on layer 7. On layer 7, we also have non-repudiation. Remember, that's the one where you can't deny having sent something or accessed something. We have our certificates, our application proxies, and this is also where we can do the deep packet inspection that we can't do on any of the other layers because we assume the data is encrypted. And since it doesn't get decrypted until layer 6, the first time we can look at the actual data is layer 7. The threats to layer 5, 6, and 7 are the same viruses, worms, trojans, buffer overflows, and really any vulnerabilities that we have in our systems or applications that can be exploited. And with that, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for being here, and I will see you in the next one where we finish out the OSI model.